Hello, 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 hello. I am back. Had a break. I'm back now. Welcome to another episode of All Elite with Kicks. It's been a lot of current and a bit current of events happening while I was gone. Um, it's been a lot of jokes. Uh, they just announced that Skip Bayless is done. Um, breaking news, I guess, in the sports world. Mm -hmm. Skip Bayless is uh, done with the talking show that's on Fox. So we'll see where he goes from there. Probably going to do full time on his podcast that he already has. Who knows? Um, USA men's basketball beat Australia. I don't know. I saw a little bit of the game while I was at work. I did see Anthony Edwards uh, did a mean crossover on that Australian guy. <laughs> the man went this way. He went that way, shot a three, made the three. Um, him and AD was balling. So they had the most points today, USA men's basketball. Um, they had also a uh, complex had a hip hop media thing, a uh, top media thing. And um, number one was DJ Academics for hip hop. I guess that's where we at with hip hop uh, news, media, whatever. I don't know. It's I, I thought a full list. Some of them I, I understand. Uh, Elliot, uh, I know he was on there, but he's been a pioneer in hip hop media, rap media. Um, Joe Budden was on there. I forgot the list of the rankings, but DJ Academics being number one is kind of absurd to me. Um, he's very biased. Um, I just don't understand why he's, why would he be on there? But he's on there. Whatever. Um, also, the joke, um, Michael Ely hugs Megan Good in front of her mans. And uh, this has been the joke of the week. <laughs> he looking at him like, uh, all right, buddy. And Michael Ely's probably looking at him smiling like, whatever. <laughs> but she lists the statement on uh, the Shy Room under comments saying that he hugged him too. And you know how it goes. But jokes is jokes, okay? Jokes gonna be told. Um... I didn't have a picture, but obviously it was an uh, assassination attempt that almost happened against a uh, former president and uh, Donald Trump. Um, that was crazy. Um, I have a lot of thoughts, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> it's not, I mean, well, I don't know. People came out as Trump supporters. I can say that on the timeline. It was crazy. Like between wrestling, wrestlers, wrestling media, you had people writing statements like they was important. It was just crazy. But um, we almost saw an attempt happen and it didn't happen. And we here. I don't know. Um what else happened? Um, it was a lot more that happened or came. Come off my mind. Oh, and Stephanie Vacure is now in WWE. Um, congrats to her. She is a great wrestler. She'll do phenomenal things. That's where she always wants to be. Some people, they work their way to be finally be noticed because I know she tried out three times. She didn't get, you know, they didn't want her at that time. Uh, they felt like she was underdeveloped and all of that other stuff. And then she just built herself, became the star that she is. And uh, now she's at where she wanted to be. So it ends up being that way. And, it, you know, uh, wrestling is a job, you know, with some people. It is some people that still dream of being in WWE, regardless of AEW existing or not. You know, it's just what it is. You know, they are the 40 year company. And um, big parts of people's childhood and people became wrestlers because of either WCW or WWE wrestlers. So it is what it is, though. I'm not mad at it. 
um, I'm happy for her and just do right by her and uh, let her do what she does best. <laughs> uh, well, you know how that goes. It has a lot to do because she's hot right now, but when that what she said was that's what they told her so you know but you know how they go um yes i will talk about that later on in the episode but um yeah so a lot of things happen current events happen i'm tired of living in a historical event i'm sick of it i'm drained from it it's been happening since i was a kid since 9 11 happened so i for some reason a historical event is always happening and i'm just kind of not desensitized but it's just like another one you know what i'm saying so let's get on with the show because i gotta fuss at y'all i really do so let's go on, get on with the show monday night you know what that means yeah 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 you know what that means realists on the grab scene queen of the enemies all elite with keys uh straight out of dallas with it dynamite fuel she lit it standing on women business going all out let's get it keep it respectful though don't want that brawl out we just talking fallout storylines and call outs say what's the word kicks i know y'all heard kicks on air with the facts not the rumors from dirt sheets if you's a real collider then let's ride with her a real live winner we going live with her yeah all elite with kicks, yeah, yeah, yeah. All elite with kicks. All elite with kicks, yeah, yeah, yeah. All elite with kicks. Yeah, man. Um, welcome back to another show. Um, as y'all know, I am doing my show differently. I know y'all used to me breaking down dynamite collision rampage all of that together but i just wanted to do a different pace on my show now um i didn't want to over you know overdo it because i feel like it's things that y'all should know or y'all should be aware of and um, i'd rather just pick the things that is happening and help with the stories help you understand the stories and things like that then just break it down each thing because there's a lot of different other podcasts that do a great job um, speaking on AEW, like as far as I might, the people that cover AEW, not the people, not the we love all wrestling, whatever, not, you know, those, because I know people tend to say that, but they are more on the WWE side, which is, which is cool. I just people need to be honest about it. I'd rather just, just be honest about it. Don't, you don't have to cover something that you don't like. So I just choose to just help, you know, those that are trying to understand or, or things like that. No, you didn't miss the Jack Perry song. I will play that for you if you want me to. I'll play it. So I'm doing things a little differently, but hey, it's Hollywood Kicks, okay? Um, Because I live tweet stuff anyway. You know what I'm saying? If you follow me on Twitter, I live tweet Dynamite. Collision Rampage. Well, some not Rampage as a lady because I've been doing things on Fridays. But Collision and uh, Dynamite, yes. But I always go back and watch Rampage. And then, of course, I do go back and watch ROH. Um, but you have different, you know, uh, platforms that are doing a wonderful job um, talking about things that's happening on Dynamite, Collision, Rampage, and things like that. I'm just here to help you understand what's going on as far as not everybody can pick up on in-ring storytelling and i don't mind doing that for y'all not a lot of people can pick up on certain character developments because it's not so much on the surface that's what i'm here for so that's why i just kind of changed the dynamic on my show uh especially if you're new especially if you are you know just coming in that's what i'm here for okay so bringing back the fundamentals of what content is supposed to be 
it's one thing to just have conversations with your buddies and stuff like that, but you have to understand that, especially being a content creator, you do influence people. Like you, if you don't notice by now, you have a lot of power to control certain narratives because if a big following podcast say one thing, people are going to start agreeing with it, even even if it's false. So you got to be careful with that. So that's why I'm just here to help educate, not spread nonsense. Okay. Now I do have my personal agendas on uh on the timeline, but that's all just for fun. It's nothing, you know. You don't you ain't gonna see me act a fool about it or crash out about it, which I'm gonna get on y'all later about. Okay. So um. First, before we get into um, all in, we know that Blood and Guts is coming up. Blood and Guts is coming up on July 24th. Um, the Elite versus AEW's best. So far, Swerve has declared himself. Um, so we have Swerve Strickland as the leader for the AEW's best at uh, Blood and Guts. Uh, we have Okada, of course, we have the Elite, and Adam Page has declared himself to be part of the Elite to participate in the Blood and Guts because Adam Page did not win on Wednesday to go against Swerve at All In. It was Brian Danielson. So, again, Blood and Guts is will be the, the turning point and also the pivot to, to going forward with all in AW's all in because that's what they're all building up to all in and also all out. They're doing it at the same time like they did last year. Um, so I'm gonna get started with the, the couple of matches that I feel like we will see at all in. Okay, so we'll talk about all in. Um, I won't talk about all out until I can see because all in also builds into all out too. So um, they're doing all of this stuff at the same time. So you have to pay attention because they, AW, what they do really, really well is tell multiple stories at the same time. And you have to catch it. Like for uh, example, Will Ospreay. Will Ospreay is like in two different storylines at the same time. One with MJF and one possibly with Pac, and then another one with Daniel Garcia, or if the you know that rumor is true that Daniel Garcia is possibly leaving, I'm not sure yet, but who knows? So um, we'll get into. Let me see the matches that we know of so far for All In. So we already know main event it will be Swerve versus Brian Danielson at All In for the AW World Championship. I figured that this was this was going to happen. I knew that it wouldn't be Adam Page versus Swerve this soon at All In because they'll probably save that for later. Okay, but it makes sense for Brian Danielson uh, to main event All In, being that you know he's been hinting that uh, his wrestling run is coming to an end. And he's on his little quote unquote retirement tour. He didn't necessarily say a date, but he's just been alluding to it. So I feel like it's going to be it's a great main event match. It's going to be a great match um, between the two. Um, again, I said it before, Swerve Strickland's AEW championship run has been a really, really great run. And um, he has added that stigma. He has added that prestige back to the elite the elite definition part on the AEW title, which he restored back. Samoa Joe added the prestige back on the belt, but Swerve added what it means to be an AEW champion, that elite. You have to have that elite. You have the, the promo that John Moxley did on what it means to be an AEW world champion. And he put that all those characteristics back into that belt to make it back important again. So he's had a great run, great champion. Brian Danielson, a, a great veteran and um, one of the best there is. Um, so I, I'm, curious, I'm curious to see how this match can go and the story to lead up to it. Um, it's going to be a great story between the two. Um, 
it's, it's very like poetic, I would say, in Swerve's eyes, because y'all know Swerve is a big Kofi Kingston fan. And we know that Kofi Kingston and Brian Danielson had the, you know, the historic match at that WrestleMania. So it's, it's very poetic in a sense. And um, I don't know, like, just say your thoughts in the chat. I, I'm eager to see it. I'm, I'm ready to see it. I will. Um, I can wait. I really can't. You can't wait. The Mariah May just stuck with me. We'll get into that. Yeah, the girlies were so pissed off. I had to calm the girlies down. I had to calm them down. That was going crazy. The girlies was not having it. They wasn't having it. Like, they was angry. Tony Khan, they, if they would have found out what kind of car you rode in, they would have destroyed it. They was not, they was not happy at all. Okay. <laughs> yes, I'm very excited to see. I know the build is going to exceed. It's going to meet every expectation. Um. I, I'm I'm just eager to see. I, I'm very excited for it. It's gonna be a great all in main event for sure. Cause people don't remember the last year's all in main event. I kind of don't. I remember who it was, but it's nothing memorable. To be honest, last year all in it wasn't too much memorable. It was memorable spots, but we was all just hyped because they made the ADK. And it, it was just a great environment. But looking back, it was just like, eh, it could have been better. It could have been better. But it's okay. It's okay. It, it was still good for what it was. It was very exciting. We all was excited to see another promotion outside of WWE fill a stadium and do a stadium show. And they did really, really good. So. Next up, we had... Um, it's the possibility. Yeah, all that was better. It was the possibility. Now, we may get the Battle of the Brooks. Okay. Will Ospreay versus Pot. We may get the Battle of the Brooks in London because Pot made a promo and he's calling out Will Ospreay. I'd rather see this. Then Will Ospreay versus MJF. I'm just saying it. I, I'd rather see this at all in. This makes sense. Who is the king of London? Is it Pac, bruv? Or Will Ospreay, bruv? The battle of the bruvs. I would like to see it. I'd rather see this. I don't care for... The Will Ospreay versus MJF, it don't really move me. Will Ospreay versus Pac move me. It moves me the most. Because what are you going to do? Go go out there and be like, say all those same dorky jokes he always say? Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Okay. <laughs> MJF could go sit down somewhere. Yes, he can. Most definitely. I, I don't want to see it. He hasn't done anything since he's gotten back, to be honest with you. I'm and I ain't saying it because I don't like already don't like him, but it's the truth. You he haven't added anything since he got back. Nothing has changed. I'm just saying. But uh, next up, since we are uh, one of the one of the uh, person in the chat brought it up, uh, Tony Storm versus Mariah May. This was now dynamite when they ended with the women's business, ending it with this. This was great, great heat. Mariah May is everything. This was great. Mariah May versus Tony Storm. 
all in is going to be good. And I saw somebody in the chat that said, you know, what if Tony Storm slowly becomes her old self in this feud? And I wouldn't mind seeing that, but I love this character so much, but I also, it will also make sense if she does, you know, morphs back into Tony Storm because Mariah May could also be like, I've been more of a Tony Storm than you have. So this women business is going to be so good um, in London at All In. Um, the story is already good. Like, it's it's incredible. Um, I love this for women business, uh, especially all the day ones that stayed. You know, we stayed down through the bad times. And we're here now. Now, I'm not saying that it's your main event because I saw people saying no, it's your main event. I'm not saying that. Not saying that I don't believe in women's business that much. But it definitely should co-main event. I'd rather this be the, the, the co-main event match. Yes, it has. Like Tony, Tony Khan did a really good job with this. I will give him that. All about Mariah has been very, very good. I've, it's, it's been about her the entire time. Like she's been very, she's been a mastermind in this entire feud. And Tony Storm bit the bait. Definitely a great signing. Fantastic signing. The first official women's main event should be. I do agree with you. I do agree with you. We gotta, we gotta keep, we gotta keep campaigning and keep supporting women's business like we've been doing. Don't let up. We doing a good job. We doing a good job. I've been doing great at bullying people to support women's business, and I'm gonna keep bullying those to support women. I'm gonna keep doing it. Now, not not all women, because it's something I don't like. But as far as women business, oh, I, you don't have to. <laughs> but go ahead, play the clip, yeah. This is what you need to do. You need to stay out of women business. I'm going to keep bullying y'all, okay, to keep supporting women. So we possibly have that match. Um, next up in women's business, we we may have Britt Baker versus Mercedes Monet at All In. Now, this one, I'm on the fifth about, but I'm not. I, I'm going to keep it positive, though. I'm gonna keep it positive. I'm I'm nervous for this for several reasons because the promo and the story can be a 10, but when the bell rings, it has to be a 10 too. And this makes me nervous. But but Mercedes can make anybody look good, but I'm still nervous. And it's not on Mercedes end. It's on Britt Baker's end. That's what I'm nervous about. I don't care about the, I know the promo is going to be there because they did really good with the promo. They did really good with the buildup. I'm just very concerned about the in-ring performance when it comes to Britt Baker because we know that she's not the best in-ring person. She has great in-ring moments. But as far as keeping up with Mercedes so they can deliver and have a great match is what I'm nervous about. But I'm going to have faith. Maybe she's been in the booth while she was out. But she has to wrestle. I, I'm, a, I'm agreeing with N and H. I have to see her wrestle a little bit. Because Mercedes was out for a year and she got back in the ring like she wasn't out for a year. That's how great Mercedes is as an in-ring performer. 
It just makes me, I mean, Mercedes is already running out the ring. You know, Britt Baker chased out the ring. That was already a, to me. I had to do, I can't be upset. I can't be upset. Let them do their thing. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's what I'm just nervous that it, it just has to deliver. Like, the song and dance has to be there. Okay, because if it's not, the discourse is going to be nasty. And who's going to take the heat? It's going to be Mercedes because Mercedes is already not like. So I'm going to be fighting folks, okay, behind Mercedes because I already know if that match don't deliver, Mercedes is going to take the heat for it. So that's that. But I'm not worried too much about the build of it and things like that. That's why I'm nervous because I'm just so nervous if that match don't do good. My girl is going to take so much heat. Exactly. And then on top of that, this is also a test to Brit because Yes, you are DMD, and yes, you are over with the crowd. But if y'all ring performance is not better than it was, you're going to get left behind, and it's going to be the same type of reaction everybody had of you before you left. Because these girls wrestling, AEW Women's Division is on a whole different level. Like They're not depending on your promos anymore. They delivering in the matches. Now, Mercedes, I'm going to need you to bleed one time. You got to bleed. You got to bleed. I need you to bleed once. You got to bleed once, Mercedes. I just need you to hit that blade just one time. You got to. This is part of women's business. You're not women's business unless you bleed. She the only one that has it yet, y'all. She the only one. She need to bleed. <laughs> like Britt was gone and I didn't miss her and the other ladies has been killing it. For a lot of AW originals, both in the men's and women's division, it is a stinking swim year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I need her to bleed like once. I just need her to bleed one time. She don't have to do it all the time. Just one. You got to bleed. Don't be scared of it. Don't be scared of the blade. You got to bleed. But yeah, that's just my opinion. I just, I'm not talking down on Britt Baker. I'm not talking down because I'm, I'm keeping it positive. I'm just being honest. I just, I'm just nervous. I just want them to deliver because for both of their states, because if Britt doesn't deliver as an in-ring person, as a person that's one of the faces of AEW Women's Division, and she wants to keep that, the original, that rep, if her in-ring performance does not meet, she's going to get left behind. If the match don't deliver, Mercedes is going to take the heat for the match not delivering all because she's already not liked. And it's easier to attack Mercedes than it is Britt Baker. So I just wanted to be good, to deliver, to be awesome. And I know that they can do it. I know Britt can do it. It might be a mental thing with her. I don't know, but it's Mercedes Monet, okay? So, We got, got to come with it. Britt Baker got on with it. Okay, next, what I think was going to be on uh, All In card, Jack Perry versus Darby Allen. Darby Allen did a promo, and he said he's basically coming for Jack Perry. So I'm like, oh, the best of the pillars match. Because them two them, them two my favorite pillars. They're my only two pillars. Jack Perry and Darby Allen. There's always been them two anyway. 
when Jack Perry was a face, everybody knows when he had the Tarzan gimmick, he was over. Darby Allen always been over. They both always been over. The situation happened with Jack Perry and, and the incident and stuff like that. And he naturally became a heel. And um, he's a great heel now. You know, uh, when he was in New Japan, he needed that excursion uh, to build up as a, a better wrestler, a better athlete, and also a better character. And um, the, you don't see the same Jack Perry that you saw two years ago. Um, I want to see it, honestly. Uh, for the TNT Championship, I would I would love to see it. I love these two, so I won. I kind of wanted this, so it would be a great match between the two young lions, the two pillars that matter. I love me some dark. Shout out to Darby Allen because he's not human. I say it time and time again. Darby Allen is not human. He got hit by a New York City bus. And still went to the pay per view. You know what I'm saying? Like he, he had one leg, <laughs> and he ended up being at this pay per view. This is I've never seen nothing like this before. I ain't seen nobody heal that fast before. Like his foot was literally this way, and he came back. <laughs> it's crazy. But yeah, so it'll be Jack Perry and Darby Allen probably. If it's not all in, it'll probably be all out. Either one of either or. But I wouldn't be surprised if it'll be on all in. But one of those championships has to be at all out. So we'll see. Next up now, I feel like. I probably won't know until I see how blood and guts go. But people have been speculating on uh, the timeline that it may be Adam Page versus Okada at All In. Because they did do a face off with each other at Dynamite. Okay, so I don't know. But we'll have to see how blood and guts go. We'll have to see. Because Okada really ain't rocking with Adam Page like that. And Adam Page really ain't rocking with Okada. They just have a common friend, which is the Young Bucks. So that's my speculation. I'm not saying that it has to be the agenda, but it will make sense. And again, Adam Page is the main character in AEW. Is they not, they won't, I'm pretty certain that they already have a creative plan for Adam Page. So I have faith and I have trust in the booking of him because it's Adam Page. So that's just, that's just me. That's just my guess. It's either Okada or it's Moxley, one or the other, because Moxley doesn't have anything. He lost the New Japan Championship, uh, the IW. GP championship, I'm sorry. So who knows? Who knows? And then my last speculation, um, we don't want it, but it may happen. And if it happened, it just happened. It may be Young Bucks versus the Acclaim at all in. Now, you have to realize I understand why they're doing this because, you know, at the time of their suspension and things like that, they weren't able to do it with them, with the acclaim. And then people started saying that they was dodging them and stuff like that anyway. So, you know, naturally young bucks do care about certain things and certain discourses. So I feel like this is their way to try to make it up for the acclaim. So even though we don't want it, but I guess it's only right for them. Because again, people was making the discourse that the young bus was dodging the acclaim. If that we that was happening. We cannot deny that that wasn't happening because people were saying that. 
So even though the timing of it is unfortunate, but they just trying to make up for what people were saying. And I mean, it's us, but it is what it is, you know? So you can't say that they ain't defending the tag team titles because they are. It's just against the acclaim and um, people on TV. Like, like I said, the acclaim people on TV that watch them, they're over them, but they're still over with the crowd. So it kind of doesn't translate. What we're seeing on the timeline is not translating to actually a claim because their merch is still selling. People are still scissoring. People still pop when they come out. Like, they're still over. Whether we like it or not. Whether we're tired of it or not, it is what it is. Um, hopefully they figure it out with the tag team division because it's been very um, on a blast. It hasn't been uh, good. It's been everywhere. It hasn't been on point in a while. It's not the same AEW tag team division we once knew and enjoyed. So hopefully they figure it out. The thing about wrestling, though, you never have a lot of things that match. AEW had a good tag team division, but everything else was crap. Like it, 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 it's just like that with wrestling for some reason. You don't, you don't have a lot of things that match. Women's division, they are doing tremendous. AEW women business is doing really, really great. AEW, however, is having a seat filler issue at the arenas and viewership issue. Like you never have things that match when it comes to any wrestling company. So it happens. It's just unfortunate. But I'd rather have a bad tag team division than have a bad women's business. I, I like that. I Somebody has to take an L. <laughs> Somebody has to take an L, okay? Because uh, for some reason, when it comes to wrestling, not everything match. Like, you can have a good champion, like, good champion, but a bad intercontinental championship story. Like, it's just always something like that. So... I don't want to see FTR in books, five... Nobody wants to see that either. I'd rather get Lucha Brothers or something. I'd rather, I don't know. I'd rather them just make it like a four-way or something. Do a four-way. Like a four-way ladder match. I don't know. They got to do something, though. Mm -hmm. We've been advocating for a private party, though. So it's time to do something with private party. I've been like, it's time to push private party. They over. It's time to do something with that. So, yeah, you, you, have, you have a lot of that going on. So all in. Overall, so far, though, um, like I said, Blood and Guts will be like the pivot point where we see the direction that they are going for for All In because after uh, Blood and Guts, it'll be like three weeks, four weeks until actual All In where cars got to start being in place. So that's what I'm seeing so far. Like we're seeing things like they're alluding to things like like I said on Dynamite Collision, it'd be multiple stories going on. Is multiple things happening at the same time. So I will make sure I'll be on my P's and Q's. So just in case if anybody missed anything, I will, you know, just tell y'all, hey, this happened, this happened, this is why this is going on. So all in, but overall, it looks like it's going to be a great card, a great pay-per-view. Um, I do trust the booking. I trust the creative on this. Um the tag team, whatever, I that's probably going to be one of those go to the, the bathroom breaks. Unfortunately, we know Jericho is going to be booked. 
We already know. Okay, so we we everybody just accept that L. <laughs> just accept it that Jericho is gonna be but like let's just accept that. Um now I uh wanted to fuss at the AW fan base. Y'all behavior last week, y'all should be ashamed of y'all selves. Okay. The, I named this episode You're gonna fantasy fantasy booking your way to misery for a reason. AEW fans 2019 up until 2020. We had fun. And you know why we had fun? We just let it was just vibes. We let things happen. No matter how ridiculous it was, no matter how much sense it didn't make, we still had fun. We just still enjoyed it. The problem is now, everybody, because we're so used to getting what we ask for, because we have a promoter that is listening to his fan base, while also have to listen to the network and also have to listen to other people. And because he listens to us, a lot of you guys feel so entitled that he should take your booking or your creative idea. And because it's not happening, you're crashing out on a timeline. And it's taken away from you actually enjoying what's in front of you. There used to be a fan base that did that. And now you can't get them to cheer. They got to go overseas to hear the crowd. They used to be them. Y'all are losing the plot. Y'all have become spoiled brats. Y'all are driving yourselves crazy because you want certain things to happen. Y'all have to chill out. AW Girlies was upset that Adam Page lost on Wednesday. Some was crashing out. I'm like, it's Adam Page. He's going to be fine. I'm pretty certain it's going to be a great match in store for him. But the fact that y'all expected him to walk in, win, and automatically main event all in like that. Come on, y'all. We used to have fun, okay? We used to have fun. Like, yes, everybody... It's fun when we all have our creative ideas. It's fun when everybody fantasy book or things like that. Yes, sometimes they take a little bit from the fans or what the fans suggestions is. But at the same time, it's causing y'all to be a little bit entitled. And when it doesn't go your way, y'all lose focus and lose sight of fun. And I'm not even saying that because I'm an AEW fan. I'm saying that because if you do that in everything, in every aspect of your life, you're going to drive yourself crazy. Wrestling is entertainment. And I know it is one of those entertainments where it heals people inner child or it makes people relive or uh, get some type of enjoyment. Stepping out of reality because people like kayfabe and things like that. But you also have to have a, a, a balance, too, with that, because if you don't have that balance. You will become everything that you say that you disliked. TNA Mecca went through that. 
they had that phase. If y'all was around when TNA Mecca was existing, y'all y'all already know how they ended. Some, even some of my mutuals, I got on some of them too, because I'm just like, you doing too much. It's it's just it's scripted entertainment. Relax. The way some of some of you guys' behavior is when it comes to wrestling and when things don't go your your way, it's almost like wrestling is the only thing in your life that goes your way and you expect it to go your way because you don't get attention nowhere else. And I'm not saying that as a dig and I ain't trying to be mean, but that's the behavior that some of y'all, you know, rub out what I'm saying. Y'all have to relax. We use it, it was one point where we was defending a lot of the goofy stuff that was happening in 2019 and 2020 because we was having fun. The match, some of the people was horrible and botching, but we were still having fun. Some of y'all lost that fun. I used to call AEW the fun side. We got rid of the 2021 fans. Now, some of the day ones is acting very bratish. And I'm just looking like, we didn't used to be like this, y'all. My thing is, why do y'all want Swerve to have a short title reign? Have y'all thought about that? It's like some it's like some of y'all want him to be a transitional champion. I don't want him to be a transitional champion. He's a good champion. They're trying to break certain wrestling curses, especially with people of color. And some people minds already is planted on what they expect to happen or what should happen. So it's easier for people to be like, we want to hang man to be booked so he can get the title back. But have you ever thought that maybe Tony Khan is just like, I want to do right by our first black champion, even though, you know, Swerve said what he said or whatever. But have y'all figured maybe Tony Khan is like, I want to do right by our first black champion? People don't think about that stuff. Because it's so, like, black male champions, it don't matter where they at. They're always transitional. Now, I could be wrong and say Brian Danston will win at All In. Or maybe Davis and lose. But see, you know, they trying to, AEW is trying to break the toxicity and the curses that we're so used to. Like I said before, with the uh, CMLL wrestlers, with the Lucha Brothers. Uh, in Mystico and just letting them do them. And people had a, a hard time reacting to it because, you know, they're so used to them only, you know, entertaining white folk, entertaining them fans, but they, they, they let them tell a story. They let them do them. They let them be themselves. And it's, you know, you can tell that people are trying to come out of that mindset because we, we've we been so used to this big man type of booking. And now you're seeing something different that can be the norm. 
and y'all having a hard time accepting it. I don't think Danielson is winning because I seriously think that Tony Khan is going to give Hangman Page the belt back and it will be off of Swerve. To do, to make up for Hangman's title reign the first time because we know how that went. And Hangman deserves a better title reign a proper one too, where he doesn't have to lose to somebody like that man that's not there no more. Mm. That's just my opinion. Because even though Brian said he doesn't want to be champion, but Danson also lies too. <laughs> that's just, he also lies. So I don't take what he says. I, he, he stated, but I, I won't believe it until I see it. But y'all have to chill, okay? Just enjoy it. And if something that you wanted didn't go your way, okay. It's not the end of the world. If it didn't happen, so what? It's not the end of the world, y'all. There's no need to crash out. Y'all are crashing out. Y'all are acting spoiled. Y'all are acting entitled. It's just entertainment. It's just wrestling. It is scripted, false fighting with guys in their trousers and tights. I could see if this is a parlay and you betting on football or basketball, but y'all are not doing it. Y'all are crashing out because so-and-so ain't winning a match. Relax. Everybody relax. Have fun. We were the fun side. We have lost sight of the fun side. We have fun at the at at AEW, like when we go to the shows and stuff. But I'm talking about online. Online used to be so much fun. We used to have so much fun. Now it's all about people wanting narratives to be pushed, or agendas, or somebody complaining about something on Thursday. Just relax and chill. Okay. That's why I start on the blocking spree. If you ain't noticed on Twitter, I have been blocking people. And you want to know why I've started blocking people? Because I'm I'm done with misery and stupidity on my timeline. Misery and stupidity. I said one stupid tape and I'm blocking it. All it takes is one. Just dumb take. Some doing it because they verify. Like, I hate that now people starting to get paid off their tweets and they get to tweet whatever they want. Some even do it for free. Some do it for engagement. Some do it to fit in. But I'm blocking you now because the mute button is not working, obviously. Because for some reason, I still see these people on my timeline. So I'll just start blocking them now. So, all AEW fans that's listening to me today right now, it's okay. It is a-okay. If you want to crash out of at something, crash out on why food is, is, is rising up. Crash out on people that is still supporting Trump and saying that he's giving us $1,200. Crash out on people... That's not voting. 
You know what I'm saying? Like crash out on something that's meant to be crashed out about. But don't crash out about no wrestling or no wrestler. It's scripted. And these people are friends. They know each other. It's not real. It's not. Y'all think I calm down? If I can calm down, y'all can calm down. If you need to block people, block them. Relax. Who's five? Okay? Take a chill pill. I ain't got my bills today because I ain't feel like fussing. So I'm like, let me just come at them like a mother. <laughs> okay, so before we get out of here, we're gonna have a oh yeah. So today they said that AEW is possibly going to them boys stadium, the best stadium in the land. Cowboys Stadium for our major event. Now I read I now I got a DM uh from one of my uh I ain't gonna say who it was, but I know that they know. Yeah, play them boys video real quick. Hold on. Yeah, play it. Ain't nobody calling me, texting me, paging me, asking me, are you still in ball? Yes, yeah, so I got a DM and they basically told me that it's not one of their already pay-per-views. So I don't know what type of event it is, but you know I'm there. I'm here in Dallas anyway, so I will be there. I just need the date and I'm dragging uh, whatever. I don't know. We're going to play that. We're going to work out something. Me and the AEW girl has already started talking, so I don't know. We just need a date. We just need a date. I just need to know the date. It's just a wrestling event. So I'm assuming it's going to be a lot of people. I'm assuming. I'm intrigued too. Plot twist. Y'all, let's just have a little uh, plot twist. What if, what if it is like AEW, WWE? New Japan, CML. Like, what if it's that type of like? I know that will never happen, but just think if it did. That would be That's sold when the out. blessings come in. Blessings come in. But the egos will be crazy because then it'll be like, nah, my guy ain't losing to this guy or stuff like that'll be crazy though. I don't know. Texas told him. Texas told him. But I'm excited. I think like people take me all day. I'm telling you, all I, I kept seeing tags and DMs. I'm like, did somebody talk about me or something? I was ready. I thought somebody was, I, I thought it, I was about to get war ready. I didn't know. I was war ready. I was like, who talking about me now? Because I've been at peace. I ain't said nothing about nobody. I've been at peace for months. But they was taking me to say, oh, guess what? Cowboys say, I'm like, oh, okay. I was ready. I know I stay ready. I stay ready before I get ready. But uh, yeah, so we'll see what the event is. I don't know when they're announcing it. Uh, the rumor is that it will be announced by the end of the year. So we shall see. Um, Because we know that they are already doing something in events um, in Japan. So maybe that will be a part two. Who knows? But also, before we get out of here, I wanted to do a fun analysis on what y'all think that this mean on the music video okay um put the picture up. okay so y'all know the not like us video came out and if you in the chat what do you think this visionary means because you know with Kendrick Lamar nothing is there like everything means something because you know he is uh, again not a surface level rapper He's a visionary. 
He's creative and everything always has meaning with him. Me, I was just like, the owl doesn't see the cage, but Kendrick sees the cage. And my analysis was that Drake doesn't understand that he's a prisoner of the music industry forever. Like, you already, you already in the cage. I know because some people will say, like, because he, you know, allegedly, you know, a pedophile or whatever. But I was like, I don't, I, I think it's more to it than that because of that whole deal that he signed. So I'm just like, you could always be a prisoner of the industry. You the one in jail. <laughs> Howdies. <laughs> what y'all think this mean? <laughs> great video, by the way. It was great all around. I wish I could break it down. But this is a wrestling show, not a video show. But this was a great video. Everybody been, you know, breaking it down and talking about it and things like that. Kind of like he defeated Drake and he's got him locked up. That's a good one. That's a good one. Okay. He said he got more in stock. He said he got more in stock. Yeah, I saw the Instagram picture of him wearing a shirt and it said rap is a joke. So who knows what that means? You never know what that means. Yeah, so. I don't know. I just, I... That's what that's what I thought it was. I just like it's more cool because when you look at it from the Al's point of view, he doesn't see the cage at all. But then when you look at it from Kendrick's point of view, he sees a cage around the bird. So I'm just like it is something there, it's something to decipher there, it's something to um take from that. That's why I felt like Drake doesn't see that he's a prisoner. He's a prisoner. He's in prison of his own madness, of everything that he probably thought he was bigger than. You're just the, you know, it's kind of like the uh the poem um Why the Cage Birds Sing. If you know that poem, that's what I kind of got out of it. But who knows? <laughs> mm-hmm. Pretty much, y'all so smart. But yeah, so um, that's the end of the show. So again, before I get out of here, again, just enjoy what you watch. Enjoy it on Wednesday. Enjoy it. If it don't go your way, it don't go your way. It's not the end of the world. Just enjoy it to see where they will go for All In. So that way you can enjoy All In. That way you can enjoy... Any wrestling, it doesn't have to necessarily be AEW for WWE too. Just enjoy it. You don't have to, it's not your job to try to understand why they booking this person with this book, this person. Who cares? Okay. If especially if you're not in content, me, me that's my job to do that. Okay. Y'all, y'all don't have to do that. 
take that away, like take that mental stress or that restraint or that, just let it go and just enjoy it for what it is. And if you don't like it, you just don't like it, it's fine. And if you trying to like AW and you just simply can't, then it's just not for you and that's fine. It's okay. I promise you, one person, you know, from what it looks like, they're not going nowhere. Okay? So let the content creators, the good ones, let them do your job. With, with, you know, let them do that. And then just, you know, be mindful. Just listen to people that know what they're talking about and want truly to see it thrive. Know the difference between people that truly want to see it thrive and just got to get engaged. Like they, they rent won't be paid if they don't say nothing negative. They won't get the press passes if they don't say negative. Like listen to people that's not, that don't have an agenda. Me, I don't be at media press passes. Y'all know I don't, you know, I, I don't kiss up to nobody. I don't do nothing. I just tweet what I want to. I have fun. I'm funny. Do I have some uh, my personal agendas? Yes, I do. And if it don't happen, y'all see what what the first thing I say? Well, I thought, but hey, I'll go with this. Y'all don't see me crash out over this. It's just wrestling, okay? I crashed out over other things, but not this, okay? So just enjoy and have fun. Um, again, follow me on All Elite with Kicks on Twitter. Tomorrow, I will be on Twitch with my best friend as we go over the boys. Uh, we're going to be talking about this episode. I'm ready to talk about this episode with my girl, so make sure uh, you tune in to that. I always, uh, I'll retweet it and stuff like that. And, on the poster, make sure you follow Young Goldie Locks, uh, her Twitch uh, page, her channel. Uh, tomorrow we'll be on there. Um, Wednesday, I am joining Lyric on her after show after AEW. So make sure you tune in uh, to Body Slam because I'll be on there Wednesday after AEW. So yeah, I'm pretty booked and busy this week. That's crazy. I'm usually not, but for my peoples, I will. <laughs> So, um, y'all stay safe, have a good night, and again, do not crash out over wrestling or anything that's not worth crashing out over, okay? All right, here my getaway music, we out of here. First of all, there's no such thing as white-collar crime, and there's definitely no such thing as black-on-black -black crime. Crime is crime. Let me explain something to you. I don't care if you have a white-collar or a tank top. If you rob me, I'm going to whoop your ass.